yeah, in his mind. That's my channel. Um, so the entire point here is to reach out to uh, those in between the church and culture, like those inside of those outside. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of good stuff. I have like over 70, 70 to 100 things, topics written down, but it takes time getting to it. Yeah. Um, mostly because working seven days a week and then research for some of the stuff. And on top of that, getting a lot of different points and points to um, to like the points written down to talk to others about because it it matters. But since this is also YouTube and the fact that I try to be professional about it, there needs to be a certain standard met, and certain things are very much um, against um, YouTube. Mm -hmm. Like some things are considered misogynistic, hatred against women. That's one of the things when you're dealing with, you know, outside of the church, inside culture, and that's mm -hmm. just kind of with today's world where everything revolves around women, one way or the other. Inside the church, that's actually true, but it's more of a what's the word? It's. I, I don't want to say women are put on a pedestal. I want to say it's more like the focus is on women in more of a healthier way. Mm. But there is a better um, relationship between men and women there. I think. Yeah, From what I've seen. It used to be, I think. <laughs> now, some, I want to say some do have men, uh, women their spouses on a pedestal. So that is kind of a bit of a problem. Mm -hmm. But that's something that is personal. Mm -hmm. Everyone's faith is personal. And if, have these uh, uh, young men have told you something about me? Uh, no, actually I don't know too much because uh, you guys just started meeting? Or? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I am a Christian Taoist. And a Christian what? Christian Taoist. Taoist? Yes. Oh. The focus is more on the way. The focus is more on okay. the, the how rather than the right. what. You know, hmm. it's it's more about the journey, less about the destination. Yeah. So in that sense, in some ways, it can correlate very nicely with... Well, let me back up a step here. It's more of a philosophy of Taoism rather than the, the, the religion side. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, I guess it fits in very well with my nature and something that took me years to figure out. Because at one point I thought I was an alternative Christian because there were some things that just did not make sense. They didn't line up with, with my values. Mm -hmm. Just because my values had changed over time. Mm -hmm. And there are some things that I believe that correlate with Scripture that do not, they're not directly talked about in Scripture. But that's, that's fine. Things mm -hmm. do yeah. change over time. It's not like I asked it to change. It just happened. Mm -hmm. um, alternative Christian, by the way, is something I came up with. Um, but when it comes down to... What are those two types of uh, churches? The ones that are all accepting. and then um, Non-denominational? Thank you. It's, it's the opposite of non-denominational. Non um, because non-denominational is basically open accepting to all. Mm -hmm. But it, it's kind of like the opposite of that. Well, it's more like in between that and... So there's open to all, there's open to, to all and then there's you know closed off. But it's kind of like parallel. Mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of the point that I was getting at. Yeah. So, as it is, that's pretty much where I stand, and there's, there's a lot here that can correlate very nicely, but it really depends upon whether or not, I guess, I'm allowed to stay, allowed to interact with the men here, because I haven't found a church in, that I could fit into for a very long time, ever since I moved down here, actually. Mm -hmm. Now, there's one decent church, but, like, it's got nothing but older men in it. No offense. Like, not exactly in touch with the older men here. Mm -hmm. There's a gap 
for between the older and the younger men. Mm. And it just so happened I'm right smack between the two. The, there's no place for the younger men in church, and there's that's why I find very few, uh, actually not here, but in the other church I've been to, there's, there's just like a... There is a lack of younger people in the churches that I've been to. It's mm-hmm. just older couples and families mm-hmm. with young kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of a problem. Yeah. Now, I, this is the first church that I've been to down here in this area where it's just like there's younger men and women. And I'm just like, why is that? Why do you think that is, by the way? Because I'm genuinely curious. Well, I mean, we are a very family-oriented church, um, and so I'd say like a lot of the times when people are raised up in the, they, you know, choose to stay and um, come to their own conclusion that this is the, the place where they belong, and so they they stay, and so, you know, I, lo- I know a lot of times a lot of like the younger generation kind of turns away from church. Um, Bad examples, person in their personal life, maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Could be. Yeah. I know I've heard that there's a lot of just church enrollment and all across all churches is just, especially going down with the younger generations. They're just not as religious as they used to be. When you take structure out of their life, what do you expect? Yeah. And that's not just simply saying the removal of fathers. You introduce bad influences, you take out good influences, and then yeah. you've got people who are just like, yeah, no thanks, bye. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's something that we try and focus on really heavily is, is trying to limit bad influences and bring in like uplifting influences, right? To where it can help you just not have as much of the turmoil of the world because we all know the world's kind of crazy, right? But we also know that Jesus Christ can help us on our journey through the world, right? I don't mind a little bit of crazy because it keeps things from being boring and kind of the same. Yeah. Limiting is great, but shutting off completely, yeah. that means you don't get the interaction, you don't get the, the, the challenges that are necessary to your growth. Exactly. Oh. Um, that, the, okay, so let me back up a step here. Just because there's conflict doesn't mean that's a bad thing. The problem lies when there's an imbalance between the two. Mm-hmm. Or if you purposely get you know, addicted to something that you're pursuing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get that, but... <sighs> it get, really depends on how, how we react to that conflict also. Um, if we go at it with, you know, are we going to stay strong through it or are we going to, you know, just let it overwhelm us? You don't think you'll react very, uh, you know, hostile to it? Do you think you, there's a fear or, or a worry that you'll ever react in a hostile way to something that's against what you believe? Just uh, just out of curiosity. Well, I would say um, I, I'm open to you know, other beliefs, but I have come to, you know, my own conclusion, because we really encourage that everyone individually pray about something, um, pray to know if something is true, if something is right, but I believe, you know, that there is truth everywhere, and that we can always learn from somebody else. Yeah, going back to uh, your foundation, um, to, if you're not sure about something, in some cases, elders, I don't think elders are always the best case just because their their understanding can differ and be very personal compared to scriptures. Mm-hmm. Now, my understanding is your scriptures include other uh, books outside the Bible, which is, I have no quarrel or issue with that at all because there are some things that I've learned that come outside of the scripture as well. I believe there comes a point where you're looking for answers, especially tied to the culture, where you have to go outside of the church these because the elders in the church they don't know you know like what about women what about relationships uh huh yeah perfect example right there as it is 
um, being biased when dealing with some of the stuff is perfectly fine. Like, I was in the Army for 10 years. Like, for me, like, right off the bat, like, 10 years ago, I'd been like, dude, anyone who's a terrorist, like, mm -mm, I'm very biased against. Now it's like digging a little bit deeper rather than just simply, simply saying no. No in a lot worse. Um, just because I was in the Army. As long as you know where you stand, you can understand, or everyone can understand what's right, what's wrong, and all of that. Yeah, I think we look at the church as like kind of giving us the like guideposts of what to follow, but then in each of our individual lives, we use our own inspiration or revelation, speaking through prayer and um, trying to get information that'll help each of us individually too so. and what does that look like if you don't mind me asking um well we try to stick to the basics of praying every day a couple times a day doesn't always have to be out loud it can be in your heart or just as you're going through your day but then it in the morning or nighttime, trying to do more, I guess you could call it formal prayer. Um, and it's not just talking, it's like listening and trying to feel what kind of answers you feel like you're getting. And if you can also get answers from reading the scriptures, you as you read, you, you start getting thoughts come into your head of something that you might be bothering you and it kind of is like it's teaching you specifically for you my understanding is that structured prayer is good for helping to develop a foundation as well as repetition mm -hmm. as long as that is based around something that's healthy so that's mm -hmm. my understanding I don't have structured prayer in my life um, I do pray every single day I have trouble doing devotions every day simply because I think, after all these years, I think it's tied to me just being struggling with finding hope. Mm -hmm. I think one of my issues is that I just gave up and I have trouble finding hope for myself. I, I'm not sure what that's tied to. Right. So that's what I've come to after like 10 years. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything really about Taoism. Do you, do you pray in Taoism? <clears throat> I would genuinely ask you to look it up, but specifically the, you know, the Christian Taoist part, because Taoism itself let's just say um, Tao is a rubber, it's more of like a description of an entity okay. um, where God is more um, very he's described as an entity that is a little bit different than Christianity, but the idea behind it is that It's more reverent, more respectful, but more distant. Mm -hmm. So you're taking a step back and being less intimate, per se. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just a different perspective. Right, yeah. And it's not something that I... I want to be careful with how I say it. Um, I'm, still, <clears throat> I'm still learning more about that myself, but the idea of structure and balance is what I find that I need in my life, mm -hmm. just because the, the way I am. But... It is something I would recommend that you would look up specifically so you can get an understanding rather than just simply me telling you yeah. things that I'm still working through myself. I don't want to get anything wrong there. Yeah, I definitely want to look that up. So. It's not something you hear about, and it took me years to figure this out, just because I didn't feel right with the way things were. I value... So my five values that correlate with scriptures and are not directly supported with the exception of one. Um, love, intimacy, uh, what are the other three? I'm blind, I, <clears throat> I'm still waking up, I'm struggling. You're good, you're good. <laughs> whatever is loving, whatever is intimate, This is like the first time I've just blanked out. Anyway, 
Th there is other. I have, I have them written down. I've. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Hopefully, I will remember later. But they're good ones. They're they're good ones. Um, they're not ones that the church talks about. But like I said, they're supported. They're supported by scriptures. They're, there's nothing wrong with them. Yeah. Now, one of them is uh, whatever is feminine. Man, there's a clear issue there simply because I w grew up with a very unhealthy view of what masculinity looks like. You know, what men are like. What men should be rather than what they are. Which is honestly a lie because growing up believing a lie and believing that you're trash and that everything that is a problem is associated with masculinity is a problem in and of itself. So, you, you won't hear that in church because that's not a problem in church, that's a problem culture mm -hmm. but some of the there's a weird hatred between the church and the cult, culture with you know you know unhealthy toxic whatever you want to call it masculinity because mm -hmm. there's just some things that make it way from over there into here but that's a different topic mm -hmm. it's just something I've observed yeah. it's interesting yeah but it's also very dangerous because it's a mindset that you know manipulation yeah you hear about toxic masculinity phrase a lot now well, the, well the, one of the problems is in today's culture is that when people do this whole like oh you're misogynistic you're, you, you hate women that actually ties in with the perception that you are a toxic male because you're spewing stuff that is hatred or whatever so that it's it's a very weird, um, very unusual, but <clears throat> it's it's very it's very off putting when it when it happens, but it's something that is affecting many others in today's world. So certain things you definitely should try to stay away from. It's not a, if it's not a part of your life, then let's just leave it there. But you don't want to come across people who are very much like that. They can't. You can't talk to them. You can't yeah. have discussions with them. And anything that is <clears throat> that they have conflict with, it's just like they shut down. Mm -hmm. In that sense, I'm kind of a liberal, I guess, because mm -hmm. I'm very open. I love conversation, I love discussion, because one of the best ways to learn is through discussion with people you are, I guess, outside with. Mm -hmm. Just getting all those perspectives. It's not about right or wrong in that sense. It's about what is different, what is what is on the outside. So maybe there's something there that that you never realized or thought about before. You know, a conversation like that is needed. For sure. If you hear the same people in your life throughout talk, it's usually around the same stuff, right? And that's not bad for, you know, growth and maturity, but there's a lot that's lacking. Mm -hmm. I guess, what do you, what do you know about this church? Like, how did you Very find little. it? Or? Now, what I've heard from everyone else, mm -hmm. and keep in mind, this is what I've heard from others, Yeah, that Latter-day Saints is another word for Mormon. And that Mormon is either a perversion or it's not exactly real. Uh, what's the word? Real Christianity? Real Christians? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I took my time with the sermon this past Sunday and I realized, and I took more of a look into it, and I realized that there's, I understand why people would say that, but I kind of disagree with that. But at the same time, the parts that people want to argue about are personal. The different, there are different points there, which I can understand. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's not a problem for me because, again, I recognize all these points as personal. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, as personal to each individual. They're not personal to me, so I don't find any conflict there. If people want to recognize... For example, one of the points that I think is important is Christ, Jesus, Jesus Christ is, he's the gateway, but he's not, he's, he's recognized differently inside of the, um, 
how do we say it? Is it officially Latter Day Saints or is it? Yeah, yeah so, the Latter Day Saint Church. Yeah, so we're yeah the full name is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, but like as members, you could just say members of the church or Church Latter Day Saints or okay what have you. Uh, well, for the inside of the Church of Latter Day Saints, the perception of Jesus is different than outside, and it may actually be closer to that of which the Muslims hold. Well, maybe not actually, because they hold them as a permanent entity. But anyway, Jesus is the gate, while those on the outside view him as more of a savior. So, you could have people think of him. The, Anyone who claims to be the son of God, there's not really a savior complex there. So uh, let me back back off of that. Um, but the point is, being a gateway versus being um, the only way to God, I guess. One of, one of the things I realized, this is a bit of a side topic, but one of the things I realized is that some people can hold strictly to Jesus and never look anywhere else. And I was like, oh, wait, that's actually a bad thing. Now, it's good to be dedicated, but at the same time, if your life is in full, nothing but Jesus, nothing outside of that, there's, I have a lot of questions about that. I'm not saying it's bad, it's just like, I have, I have questions about that, just because, is that even healthy? Too much of one thing is generally a bad thing. Yeah, there's definitely lots of places you can find truth. I mean, we're, our church is focused on Jesus Christ, but we try not to exclude. Like, I, we're kind of encouraged to learn out of, it says, learn out of the best books. You know, try to enrich your life in any way you can, too. So. There, there were two books that were said that were outside of this, that were included alongside of uh, the, the Bible. Which books were they, and is it only two, or is there more? Yeah, so we read out of also the Book of Mormon, which is also another testament of Jesus Christ. Um, so this book is about, um, I know that, so you're talking about the two books that were mentioned, was that in the Elders Quorum class? That was one of them. For the second. The second one was, was the Pearl, uh, Pearl something. I'm, I'm blanking on it because this is not something that I've ever studied or learned about. Yeah, I think uh, you're, you're talking about the Pearl of Great Price? Yes. Mm -hmm. wanted to ask about that simply because I, I can't remember if I ever heard of it or not, but I knew that there was other books that were outside. Um, outside of... Uh, <clears throat> how do I say? Outside of what I've ever learned. Let me yeah, put it that yeah. way. Yeah, so we view these books as scriptures like the Bible. We, of course, we still read out of the, the Bible and still view it as scripture also. So it's not to exclude the Bible, but... To add. To add to, to what you're, you're reading. It's like, it's like um, I like to think about it when you're... I like to compare it to when, you know, you're on court in a trial. Um, it's much better to have multiple witnesses rather than one witness. Yep. So if you're thinking about it in that regard, you have the Bible as the first witness, and then the Book of Mormon as the, the second witness. That, that, that makes sense. So this, this yeah. book, it's about another group of people um, outside of, well, it, it begins in Jerusalem, soon before it's um, attacked by Babylon, you know, and that happens around like the time of Jeremiah in the Bible. Um, that's when it begins, and it's about a family who um, is led by God because of their faith to um, promised land. And, um, yeah, it's kind of their story. Yeah, so it's their ancient record of, of their dealings with God. Um, like in the Bible, it talks about the sheep of another fold, right? And this is essentially the, the record of that, that other sect of people that, Jesus Christ dealt with because or I guess God and Jesus Christ dealt with because God is our loving Heavenly Father he, he, he wants us to to come back to him any way that we can right and so this is his dealings with those people because 
God wouldn't just leave out another sect of people in another part of the world. I think when it comes down to the Old Testament, there was a lot that was simply kept out or then killed off simply because it was strange, it was different, or for unknown reasons, which I think people understood as it's bad for you, but you'll find out later. Um, which is why some of the rules around meat were very stringent because there were like there was the meat was not if it had worms and stuff in it, it they had to be taken care of, they had to be purified. That that's just an example. You don't want to eat meat with worms in it. Mm -hmm. Um and I think dealing with the, the, the sexual stuff as far as like sleeping with who and all of that, that's simply for uh, keeping the, this is a problem that is very, very stressed. It's, it's hard to talk about in, when it comes down to Muslims, but like genetic issues when you're marrying within the, the, the family and all that. I don't want to say within the family, but I'm talking about like within the family tree, so to speak. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so there's genetic issues there, which, I think is tied to that. And the last one happens to be with when you um, bring outside gods into into your life, which can lead you astray. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think God was very harsh back then, mainly because he had to be. And things were at a much slower pace. They're not like today's world. And things are just like you know, yeah. within days, within hours, things happen. So, yeah. yeah. I, so I hear what you're saying. I just want to make the point that I think God handled things very differently then as, it, as he does now. Yeah. So, while he is forgiving, I don't think there was a place for forgiveness years ago back then just because it could allow things to happen that were that I believe were actually bad, mm. mostly for the Jewish people back then. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, if you look on the channel, I have a like an hour long conversation with a Jew as well. He's a furry. He's he's uh, one of the people I've talked to, one of my friends who I've talked to. Uh, I don't know how long ago, we just ended up talking and become friends. Mm -hmm. Um, and he cares very much about his Jewish faith and heritage. So. Mm -hmm. There's definitely some good stuff there that if you're interested in, you can look at that as well. <sighs> yeah, I think um, I, it's kind of like when you have kids as a parent, you you don't necessarily treat each kid the same because they all respond different ways. So, like, I have a daughter who's really timid, so I can't just yell at her like I could with my son, like, to get his attention because she'll kind of crumble. So maybe God understands what needs to be done for different types of people at different times. Well, in fact, uh, there's a lot of people that have a rebellious streak, and it does look a little mm -hmm. different than the in boys and girls. They're, the way they learn is also different, too. But one of those things that you can understand is when God says, you know what, fine. You can just do what you want, and you'll learn the consequences as you go through life. Yeah. I think as parents, you could probably understand there, there comes a point where you have to let them learn. Learn the wrong way. You're just like standing there looking. Mm -hmm. See, I told you. Don't <laughs> stick your finger in the light socket. Yeah. Yeah. You'll have a very shocking experience. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <sighs> Kids, gotta love them. Yeah. <laughs> experience is, is a good teacher. Um, and Yeah, I think that's exactly how how God works with sometimes he just has to let you do your own thing because sometimes we'll too stubborn yes, I, I, I know we'll, I am. we'll get a, an answer so to speak and then it's not what we wanted to hear or not what we wanted to learn at that point and so we just keep rebelling and then it just kind of he just ends up letting us take over and, and giving us our free will right that's the whole point of us coming to this earth is to have free will. Um, coming to this earth, you mean being born? Mm -hmm. Do you think have a 
do you think that you have a say as far as you know who you are being born to begin with? I think some people regret that or they they never believe they they had they consented to that, but I mean you exist, so <laughs> yeah, you have to figure out how to deal with that. I guess. Well, in our church, we we believe that we are eternal, so we've lived before we came to this earth. We didn't have bodies at that time. But we were ourselves. I don't know if we really. Um, I don't think we have a an answer about like we chose like I chose to come to this family, but we were like you were you. I was myself. We had our identity. So in a way, like Christ, that we came down here to Earth to to live and all that. Mm-hmm. I can it's understand that. Yeah. I can understand. Yeah. I've had thoughts about that too, where it's like, were we? Did we come down here because we accepted um, like an offer, or a deal, and then all knowledge is raised? I mean, uh, other religions talk about like reincarnation, which like you you die, you come back as something else or someone else, and that idea ties a little bit into what you're talking about there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we essentially believe that before this life, like he was saying, we lived, we lived with God, with spirits, and God gave us this plan to um, come, come to the earth and have this mortal experience and to learn and grow and also to um, be born into our bodies. And so we're given this time to choose God and to um, essentially... Yeah, like I said, learn and grow. Learn and grow. I'm 36. I've done a lot of learning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've done a lot of growing. Now I'm growing sideways. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love that food. <laughs> I prefer junk food now. <laughs> yes, yeah. bad joke, bad joke. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely harder the older you get. So you guys will find that out. Yeah, you, you will. It's just like you have to start tightening up and start like, yeah, let's avoid that because that yeah. will cause health issues. <sighs> and of course, one of the studies that uh, has been revealed or rather is suppressed is that sugar is a contributor of why you are fat, why you struggle with weight, and along with Coca-Cola. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, well, we'll keep... I'm just trying to keep... To, keep soda low in my life replace it with tea tea and flavored water oh it's hard just drinking water yeah for sure yeah we drink a lot of coke (laughs) yeah well if mm, keep in mind the sugar and the the artificial sweeteners they they add up to your life so you want to keep that limited Mm -hmm. yeah uh tea coffee flavored water uh, that stuff is a, a healthier alternative than yeah, you know, soda. Mm-hmm. Not saying, not. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> I think that is one. That's actually a very good point. Um, something that I've learned that many people in the church struggle with is presenting their faith in a way that is, you know, like this is what I believe. Mm-hmm. But there's a fine line between forcing rather than presenting. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, I think it's harder simply because it's tied to listening more than talking more. Mm-hmm. This is one of the first times that we've talked, so it does feel like I've talked for a lot, but I think a lot of it's more explained. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Believe me, I'm not trying to talk the whole yeah, time. No, you're no, good. You're good. I, I think you've made a lot of you know, really good points. And, you know, I think that's essentially what we want to come away with is you know, both sides taking something, um, yeah. s- something new. Now, I very much would like to be able to interact with um, you guys more and the other men to, to talk, to converse, to, mm-hmm. I, to in a sense, to learn. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as my faith goes, I guess I have worried that people would look at that a different way. Like, I'm not someone who's lost. Mm-hmm. I'm not someone who is struggling to figure out where they're at. Now, in a sense, since I'm still, you know, finding 
different parts of, of my path, so to speak. I guess there, there could be an argument that, like, just because you don't know your the, the path you're on, yeah, that, that could mean you're lost. And I'm like, we can have a discussion about that, sure. That's a good point. But... Well, definitely, mm. whether whether you decide to keep learning about this church or not, you're you're always welcome. The the men in the elders quorum that we have are always going to be happy to see you, um, so you don't ever have to feel like like unwelcome or anything. You'll always be welcome here. So. I hope so. I yeah. value conversation. I, I value, um, and I have a lack of other men in my life as far as like people, you know, men to talk to. And mm-hmm. with my job, it's kind of a lonely job. Mm-hmm. It's like a warehouse job in a sense, where it's just like yep. you, you, you show up, you do your job, you, you interact with a couple of people, and you leave. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, there's too many women at this particular job. That's not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. But when dealing with a modern woman versus a traditional woman, mm-hmm. that is a bad thing. Because there are different values there, mm. or rather, the traditional woman has way more values than the modern woman, mm-hmm. mm. and the modern woman seems to lack a lot of values, healthy values that you would find in a traditional woman, mm-hmm. and it's something that church will not talk about. It, one of the mistakes that I believe the church, and this is regardless, I'm talking about overall all of the churches, they fail to talk more about the different types of women that exist out there. And the most that they'll talk about is the Jezebel woman. Is that something you're familiar with? The spirit of Jezebel, the one of the one, the, the type of woman who likes, you know, very prideful, very, mm-hmm. very haughty, and they wants to uh, <clears throat> be lustful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> of course, her end was not exactly pretty. Yeah. I think there's uh, the women who have bad endings. In culture you don't hear much about because it's very swift, it's very short. Mm-hmm. Obviously I don't think they get thrown off balconies, but <laughs> thrown off balconies at the command of a general because General uh, King Juhu, J-E-H-U, my favorite king of the Bible, simply because he was zealous for the Lord and he did so much, mm-hmm. but he still fell off. He still mm-hmm. like let his heart get straight at the end. Mm-hmm. But he's the one who gave the order, you know, throw her off. And boom, that's how she died. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, the church does a very bad job of defining different types of men and different types of women. Mm-hmm. What kind of man do you want to be? Me or he? All of all of them. Yeah. You're, you're yeah. sitting across from yeah. me. So. <laughs> yeah. Well. I guess I've always said I want to be someone that the Lord can trust. Um, someone with, you know, kind of just putting God's will before my own and, you know, being willing to to follow Him, you know, even when it is hard. Um, yeah. That means being tested a little bit, so you, yeah. 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 Yeah, so, you know, I'm still going to go through those challenges, you know, if it's you know, his will, I, it's, because, you know, just because you are following him doesn't mean you're still, you're going to go get through life without any challenges, you know, that's pretty much a byproduct of life is going through those hard things. Mm-hmm. Where you go through them matters too. They don't talk much about that, but that's, that's fine. Mm-hmm. That is also, in a sense, personal, like, you, you settle where your heart is at. And if you make you, the church, you make your family be where your heart is at, that's where you're going to settle at. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, if you're focused on the right things, you get knocked down and you just keep going that direction. I think that's kind of what we're shooting for. I think my heart settles around conflict, but I'm struggling to, to it's been years that I've been working through this. So it's like I struggle with, I recognize the need for stuff like peace, stuff like um, purity, sanctification, which outside of the church is called um, being the best version of yourself, mm-hmm. which there's a group of men that uh, correlate that. that. That's part of that 
one of the messages that they they hold very value is to be the best version of yourself. Um, the the problem is I recognize the need for something like that, but if I were to obtain peace, I would be very I would then start to stagnate. I would I would I would struggle with that because I can't like what would I do then? So in a sense I need certain things in my life and I can't necessarily obtain the what I'm looking for because then I'll just stop moving, I'll stop searching, I'll stop looking, I'll stop asking questions. And I think that has caused issues with some of the older men, but only because there's misunderstanding there. Like I'm not I'm trying to simply learn. I'm not trying to like change anyone. Yeah. That's not the point. Yeah. Now there's other people that will come behind you, you and me, who will want to they'll have some of these same questions. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, my channel is my legacy, so to speak. What I'm leaving behind is for everyone else to come after. Mm -hmm. And these are questions you won't hear too many other places as well. Like, I've written down tons of stuff. Um, I started off asking questions like image versus identity, uh, the different types of relationships out there, whether or not even relationships outside of marriage could exist. Technically, they can, but that's a different story. The idea that I had a good conversation with a, a, an old friend of mine, he's retired at this point, is that if you take the structure from marriage, and you can, you can apply it theoretically to any other, uh, any other relationship, out, ugh, excuse me, any other relationship out there, and it should work. But the one thing that I've learned is, if you have faith, you have belief, you believe in God, insert that at the very beginning, or else if you try to slide it in and halfway through, it's just not gonna work. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Makes sense. I didn't realize that when I did that with one of my relationships, so, oops. Uh, yeah, my bad, sorry. For sure, God, putting God first will, will help in all things, and I like, I like that example of, of trying to like get the marriage structure kind of deal with just relationships outside of that, because that's really what's gonna help is, is having that it's like a, you could say it's like a Christ-like love, right? Because cause Christ, when he was on the earth, he, he ministered to people, right? And he helped anybody. He didn't, didn't matter, say, how badly you sinned or, or what you've done or if you were sick or anything, right? He still would minister to you. How he helped differed from person to person. Yeah, exactly. Pointing out the, we the woman at the well with... The f with what she was doing was different than how he helped some of the, the ones who were other blind uh, who were struggling like those who were blind yeah. um, like that one man where he, he healed and he told him what his words afterwards which was a little bit different than others yeah. it's like the healing itself it's almost like the lesson was behind the miracle in a sense and I find that interesting just because it wasn't always the same thing. And, you know, the, the miracle with the, the food, when he got handed out to the crowd, there was some, not every, every time it's listed, there's usually something a little bit different, which I found interesting as well. Like the fact that Jesus had to go across the lake and leave the crowd that was following him because the idea there was they were following him for food, not because they, you know, cared for his message. And I think there comes a point where you realize and sometimes you have to move. Mm -hmm. Maybe you won't figure it out right then, but you'll figure it out later. Mm -hmm. like, there's, there's some interesting stuff behind all that. Yeah. When it comes down to your faith, though, th there's another question that's on my mind. Yeah. It's about it being personal. Like, has your faith been made real to you? Is, or is it something that you're still, wor still working with? For me personally, my I always will work on my faith, right? There's not like a definitive, like you have a perfect faith because nobody's ever going to be perfect. More or less satisfied. But, not mm -hmm. as much perfect, but more like you're yeah. satisfied. Yeah. yeah, like I I always want more faith, right? But 
where where my faith level is at right now I, I I am happy with but but because I've found how much I've gained from the faith I have currently um, I always want to have a little bit more faith and that kind of drives me to say come out on a mission like we are or or, or read my scriptures daily and pray right it just it helps urge me to do that a little more so that I can be helped through life and yeah. You know. I was just gonna say I think that's a good description. So, I'd say it's similar for me too. Just you know, I've I've prayed about it myself. Um, I've prayed to know if God's really there, and I feel I've gotten my own answer um, for my personal faith. But at the same time, like he said, I'm still looking for ways to to grow that faith further. Um, to learn more about God and about Jesus Christ and um, to just uh, I guess yeah just keep growing it keep keep feeding the, the fire I guess you could say and that's not to say that the fire won't ever go down or anything right I've had times in my life where my faith felt like it was nothing but through pushing through putting God first and and trying to remember my my fundamentals, my base, right? My yep. foundation. That's really what has pushed me through to to gain my faith to to I guess help my faith grow stronger cuz you you can't have faith if it's not tried, right? It has you have to have that trial of faith to know that it's it's true. You also don't want to be in a uh, find yourself in a position that I found myself when I was overseas where basically my mind split and my faith got fractured right down right cut right in the half mm -hmm. so I had to rebuild myself um, yeah. on a, on a spiritual level I guess um, and this isn't really physical issues it's just like the spiritual and, and yeah. uh, the mental side I guess I had to get some counseling afterwards but then again you go overseas you, you get into these conflicts you're gonna have to do something mm -hmm. um, but rebuilding who I was as a Christian is you don't hear much about that either. So, yes, you're right. Build up your foundation, but if something happens where you have to rebuild it, just be aware of that too. Just because trials and challenges happen. And it's okay not having all the answers. Mm -hmm. But the elders will not always have the answers either. Yeah, that's a problem. But that, that's just, maybe that's just part of life. That you have to learn. As you go, yeah. I know I've hit a couple walls in my life, and I realized my limitation. I was like, "Yeah, I, I think I'm good," mm -hmm. but maybe that's needed. Still, a lot of questions left. Uh, do you have any questions for me? I know I've asked you guys questions, but questions for me or not? Not today. For me, I'm definitely gonna research. Yeah, I want to look up Christian Taoism. Yeah. No, no. Please do. And I'll look up your channel as well. Yeah. Um, in his mind. Yeah. It's got a picture of a tall building, and the building itself is in Durham. Okay. Oh, cool. But the idea is presented that we're always going through life, so we're never really going to we're never really going to be standing still. Yeah. I know there's a couple of people who like doing videos while they're driving and stuff like that. But for me, I like having intros for mine, so I can't like it's, it. Has to be a mixture between, between like, um, <clears throat> I, if I'm going to be uploading videos with an intro, I have to do so through my laptop, which is very convoluted and very frustrating because like you have to doctor it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but for others, I can just simply like record on my phone and then just upload it directly, and there's no intro. Mm -hmm. The intro itself I'll work on just because it's good. It hits very well, but I could make it be a little bit deeper. The idea is, is pursuing something long and lost because there was, a, there was someone in my life, I didn't ask for it, but it was roughly around the time of my deployment. So he's, he was in my life for 13 years in my head. Uh, he wasn't demonic. He wasn't. I think. I think he was a spirit of some kind, but he wasn't demonic. He wasn't angelic. He was something in between. 
I haven't figured that one out yet. Just he left like a week before Christmas in two thousand in two thousand nineteen, which he had, we had a conversation and he turned around and he just left. And I ever since then I saw him twice. I like I just haven't figured out like what was that about. So in his mind is a reference to that as well because in in, in a sense when you learn things from others, different points of view. Yeah. yeah. So it's not again, this no, this yeah. none of this stuff it goes against what you believe. It no. correlates very nicely in some ways. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd like you to take this book if you don't mind. Would you like a copy of Book of Mormon? I'll look into it. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. I would like to know the differences because here's the thing. I can't talk about something. I can't What's the word? If I'm going to talk about something, I want to be accurate. Yeah. I, I I pride myself on accuracy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that matters for a lot of things. So yeah, thank you. I'll I'll look into this. Yeah. For sure. Uh index. Is there an index? Mm-hmm. Indexes in the back. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's like a introduction that kind of explains a little bit more about where the book itself came from and um, a little bit about what we talked about. And then after that, it gets into the, you know, the actual book itself. The thing that, one of the things that I would like to leave with here is the fact that there's books missing from the Bible as well. They're left out. And yep. the fact that there's very little talked about them bothers me. But maybe that's a good thing. Um, just because I haven't looked into these books myself and I've just been too busy. I'm, I will, though. I will look into them. Yeah. And there's questions with Christianity as well, but it's more like with the church on, on that side. Because deciding what should be viewed, what should be in public, and what should be hidden is something that I want to say goes against um, something about that rubs me the wrong way like it almost goes against scripture I don't know maybe not because God himself is described that he uses uh, that he hides he, use, he uses the darkness to cloak himself and that he cannot be revealed because he would you know, kill those who looked upon him which makes sense but as far as scripture goes, these books outside the Bible, they still consider scripture. Yeah. So in other words, is the Book of Mormon, does that correlate with, with the Bible to the point where it's something that should have been a part of the Bible? So it's a, it's a different set of people. And so it's, it's like the Bible, but it wouldn't have been possible to have it in the Bible because the Bible is, was um, it was published I guess um, in a different part of the world in a time where, where the Book of Mormon couldn't have been so in a sense um, yes because it backs up the beliefs of the Bible but it just wouldn't have you know been possible at that time but and I want to hand them the pamphlet. You can read this pamphlet as well. Yep, it, talks, it talks a little bit more about where the Book of Mormon came from and how it came to be. Um, oh, well, I'll look then, into it. I'm not good with history, but I'll look into it. Um, yeah. Thank you. And then we can talk about about more about what you've read um, when we meet again, because I'm sure that you'll find stuff that, that you'll have questions about, and we'll be happy to answer all those questions. I will try to find a way to ask these questions in a way that will cause little conflict because conflict itself needs to be applied appropriately and you know yeah. with respect because yeah. I'm not I am not an opponent I'm not an enemy now I may have questions that may come mm-hmm. across very like you have to present it a certain way because yeah. God knows you don't just spit out the question right then and there <laughs> it's like talking with women you gotta find the right way right. the right words yeah. maybe she'll cool. stop and think rather than just ketch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you've heard stories about that. Yeah, yeah. So Tapped. We'll be happy to answer all the questions that you have. Yeah, we don't, we we don't view questions as like a bad thing because, you know, without 
questions, how would we, you know, really learn? Yeah, that was my main concern. Is like I hold, I hold two different set of beliefs. Would that actually cause issues and problems? God forbid. I've been going from church to church. I just have not found a place to connect with people that. Excuse me, men to talk to 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 engage with. I guess, mm-hmm. you know, discussions and yeah. stuff. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. That's true. Well, I'm still kind of new here, ah. but the, the guys I've met here have been pretty nice to me, so I think you'll enjoy talking to them. Nice is can be um, described in different ways. I deal with mm-hmm. men who are bi, those who are gay, those who have issues, mm-hmm. young men, and some older men. Um, there's also a lot of instability as well, hence why the... I need structure and I need to rebalance whatever I lose my balance I come back to it mm. that is very important um, and because I've, I've I've had to relearn and regrow myself as a Christian so to speak um, not too many other people can actually just go out to the different types of men out there and actually hold conversations and talk yeah God brought something back into my life from my past so that I can talk to these people, which was out of the blue. A friend of mine passed away, and her daughter called me back up. One thing led to another, and I was just like, wow, this, these are steps that are led before me. Uh, one, this is a bit of a sidetrack here. Side, uh, side uh, tail, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Yeah. Um, I believe that, I, I, re- I usually refer to God as a creator. I believe that you know there's a creator here in this world, yeah. um, because of the the past, the steps that were laid before us, and the fact that there are patterns in this world, and that this directly goes against nihilism and the black pill, where like what's the point? There there there's no point to any of this, um, when there's so much that is removed from your life that you ask questions of why. So yeah. And directly, that does actually fight against that. It gives a very valid reason why, you know, things on the spiritual side matter. Mm-hmm. Anyway, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, if that's it, I. What, what time is it? Just past nine. I appreciate you being with us tonight. Of course, thanks for taking the time out of your day. And-